Welcome back to the channel. Today I am so excited I'm going to be teaching you some really fun stuff when it comes to 3D printing. We're going to jump in and I'm going to show you how to design gears and wheels and other hinges and stuff like that that print in place and actually work. All right. Print in place, of course, means that you can just print it, pull it off of the printer, and it works. You don't have to like glue pieces together or put screws in it. It's kind of like, in my opinion, in one of the holy grails of 3D printing. So I'm gonna teach you how to do print in place hinges and wheels and stuff like that that actually work. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Dassault Systems 3D Experience SolidWorks for makers. We'll get back to that in a bit. I'll give you the whole pitch later but for now let's just jump into what we're going to design print in place gears and wheels and stuff at least to me always seemed extremely daunting and complicated until i finally sat down and studied them and figured out how it works if you want to see some great examples of print in place stuff moving and get really inspired check out i believe it is um, clock spring or click spring i'll put a link down below, uh, just beautiful work, 3D printed stuff that moves and, and you, you, know, you pull it off the bed and maybe you fold some parts up and just incredible stuff. Wonderful inspiration. So let's talk about how this stuff works. All right, let's start with the basic core concepts. I'm gonna go really quickly uh, and I'm gonna be working in X-Design. That's the online CAD platform you know, in the cloud. I like it because it's a super simple interface and I like a simple interface. So let me just jump right in and show you what I'm talking about. So at its basics, if you've used any of these programs before, you'll know that you can do things like create, you know, a cylinder. We'll just do a 20 millimeter cylinder and then we extrude it. That's kind of the basic process you see all over the place. So we're gonna extrude this and let's say we do 20 millimeters tall. So now we have a cylinder, right? Obviously. Now we're gonna put a hole in it. Uh, there's a bunch of ways to do that. Um, I'm just gonna manually draw one. So we did 20 millimeters, let's do a 15 millimeter hole. And let's put that hole all the way through it. Now in X design, you need to be sure to switch over to specify that it's going to cut. And then you say, okay and now we have a hole through it. So the basic concept is if you were to put another cylinder inside that hole like this, let's say our hole is 15 millimeters, we're gonna drop this down to um, 14 millimeters. If you put a cylinder in that hole and printed it, let's go ahead and extrude that, say okay, you would expect those two pieces to be able to slide freely and not touch each other. And that's the core concept, right? You're just printing these things vertically that don't touch. Um, now there's more to it. I'm about to show you the trick that allows you to build this into things. Because if you printed this right now, it would fall apart. There's nothing holding these two pieces together. Let me just jump in here real quick. The way I'm doing it is not the only way. As a matter of fact, it's probably not even the best way. I know some of you out there are screaming at your computer screens. Well, you know, why aren't you doing it this way? Let us know in the comments the way you do this. Share you know, tips and tricks to help the other people. Uh, that's what we're here for. Okay, so let me undo this and show you how you would create a captive axle in the middle of this cylinder. And this is gonna be the core basis for all of this stuff, right? So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna get rid of even the hole in the middle. All right, so we want a 15 millimeter hole in the middle. We've got a circle drawn now, now that I've undone. It's a solid cylinder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extrude this into it, similar to what I did before, but instead of going the full way through, I'm gonna utilize a draft angle. Let me show you what I mean. We're only gonna go five millimeters in. And we go down here to advanced, and we choose draft, and we choose direction. And instead of five degrees, I'm gonna do 45 degrees. Now again, there's so many ways to do this. This is just the way, an easy way to demonstrate it that works. Now you'll notice this is, cone is going the wrong way. So I'm gonna flip it around up here, the direction that we're gonna go. And again, you have to be sure to switch over to cut. And you can see now we have a chamfered 
whole. Now, that doesn't give us exactly what we need yet. What we have to do is we have to extend this through. So we did five millimeters. We're gonna want a five millimeter chamfer on the other side too. So let's only go, let's see, it's 20 millimeters tall. We got a five millimeter chamfer. We got a five millimeter chamfer. That means we have 10 millimeters to go. So let's switch this distance to 10 millimeters and switch the direction and switch it to cut and say okay. So now we have a chamfer and a hole that goes pretty deep in there. Then we can select that face in there and we can extrude that face just like we did before. And we're going to um, extrude five millimeters. We can see it's going the wrong way. So let's swap directions, let's switch it to cut, but Remember, we need to put that 45 degree angle on there. I'll show you why. Believe me, this will make sense in just a minute. We go on here to advanced. We choose a draft of 45 degrees and we can look and it's, it's making a little cone there. It's the wrong way. So we switch, hit those little arrows to switch directions and that's what we want. Make sure it's on cut, hit okay. And bam, we have here a cylinder that has a 45 degree chamfer on either side of the central hole. We're almost there, we're halfway there. So now let's build our axle. So let's go here to this bottom face and let's draw a circle. Now here's a tip for X design. Uh, if you hover whenever you're in drawing mode, whoops, when you're in drawing mode, if you hover over a circle, it will show you the center of that circle. So if you had drawn off axis, if you're off in the middle of nowhere or something, you can hover over a circle, boom, like that, and it shows you the center. So what I'm going to do, we want our axle to go through the middle, but we don't want it to touch. We want there to be a gap. I'm gonna leave a huge gap. I'm gonna leave a, a full millimeter of a gap. Okay, so that's a 15 millimeter hole. We're gonna do a 14 millimeter axle. Uh, typical printers, you could do a half millimeter and have plenty of room to spare. I'm doing a bigger gap so you can see it easier on my screen here. So we're gonna extrude this just like we did to make the hole but now we're building the axle using a draft angle. So let's extrude this. So we can see it's going the wrong way. So we've got to flip directions. We want it to go five millimeters and we want it to be drafted. You can see the draft is the wrong way. So I flip it. Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. So we say, okay. So that gets us part of the way there, but it's really hard to see. Now you can click down in here and extrude it from there. And you can do the whole thing that way, but I'm going to show you a little bit easier way to look at it. You go here to view and you choose a section view. Now this is the wrong um, side. So let me switch sides here. There we go. I'm on the YZ. Now we've cut it in half and you can see what I'm drawing here. You can see that gap. Look at that gap, right? So let's extend this out. If you're not caught up yet. If you're not figuring out what I'm doing yet, give me just a minute and you'll understand it completely. So I'm going to extend this out 10 millimeters. That looks right. And then I'm going to select this face on top and I'm going to extrude it. And again, we're going to do that whole draft thing, right? So we're going to do five millimeters. We're going to go down here. We're going to add a draft and you can see it's turning into a small cone. We want to flip that draft angle 45 degrees outward. That looks right. So we say, okay. Now remember, we're just looking at this cut in half, but let's turn this to be the way that the printer would print it. Look at this. Okay. So let's say this is our print bed down here. Your printer is going to print it vertically here. It can do this 45 degrees. No problem. It can do vertical. No problem and it can do 45 degrees outward no problem as well. So in theory, if you printed this, you would have a spinning axle in the middle which didn't touch anything, but it did capture it, it's stuck. These two are stuck together, but it spins freely. And this is the basic concept behind all of this print and play stuff. Pretty much just figuring out what angles you can create inside these spaces to allow them to print, be connected to each other, but not physically touching. Let me take you through another example, extrapolating this to actually make something. I'm going to make a toy car that has all four of its wheels free spinning when you take it off of the bed. Watch this. Big thanks to Dassault Systems for sponsoring this video with their 3D experience SolidWorks for makers. 
uh, it, it's really a powerful package. It's $9.99 a month, and you get access to a plethora of tools. There's, you know, X-Design, which I use the most, which is kind of a CAD, but in the cloud, you can use it anywhere. Anywhere you've got an internet connection, you can use this, which I take advantage of a lot, especially on cold days. Then there's X-Shape, which allows you to be more organic and move things around with some surface modeling. There's a bunch of other tools, too, that are maybe beyond my personal skill set, but I'm sure other people would find it useful. And there's SolidWorks Connected, which installs on your computer and has the full SolidWorks suite of tools, but it also connects to your cloud stuff and you can share parts back and forth. It's incredible. You can use their platform to collaborate. Multiple people can design multiple parts and you can put them all together in one assembly. And there's even an online community where you can ask for help or share your designs and stuff like that. One thing I'm personally super excited about is that they've added CAM toolpaths to their system. They've now got a tool in there where you can design your parts and do toolpathing with their award-winning tools. This is awesome. Again, it's $9.99 a month. Dassault Systems 3D experience for makers. Check them out in the link below. Here's another quick tip. You'll notice here I'm only modeling one wheel, then I mirror it across axis so that you end up with the full axle all the way through the car, and then I mirror that so you have a front and back. I only had to model a quarter of this car. All right, it's time for gears. Now, why do I throw up quotation marks when I say gears? Gears can get a little bit complicated to explain. I'm not gonna go into all the math between how to make accurate gears that mesh perfectly and stuff like that. What I'm gonna show you is a quick way to create gear-like shapes that hit each other and move, but maybe aren't mathematically accurate. You know, if you were trying to do a clock, you wouldn't do it this way. The good news is, uh, uh, SolidWorks Connected, the desktop software that installs whenever you get into the Maker program, has a toolkit that can generate those fancy complicated gears for you. Just uh, Google SolidWorks Toolbox Gears. And what I've learned is it's really awesome. You can generate the gears using that method. And once you save them, they actually go to the cloud so that when you open up X-Shape, which I prefer because it's kind of a simpler you know, more matched to my skills, because I'm not an engineer, um, you can actually pull those parts in, because they're already there. So that's cool, but that's not what I'm showing you. Let me show you how to make a, uh, a quasi gear. It's a gear, but it's not a good mathematical gear. Basically, this is gonna be teaching you how to use patterns. So let's start here from the top, let's create our gear. And for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do the captive central axle. I'm gonna skip that part and just show you how to make the teeth. So let's make our gear, I don't know, 30 millimeters around, and then let's extrude that out by, mm, let's see what looks good. Does 30 millimeters look good? That's a little tall, I want a chunky gear. Let's do 20 millimeters. Yeah, okay. So, we'll choose a face here, and we want teeth. How do we make teeth? This is where patterning comes in. There's a million ways you could do this. You could choose, you know, a, a rectangle to be your tooth or cut part of a circle. I like this slotting tool that they have because it gives me like kind of a, a hybrid rectangle circle and you can change the size. So we're gonna do big, fat, chonky teeth here. Just, just doing it visually, not measuring anything to be accurate. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna extrude this to be part of this cylinder. It's going the wrong way. Let's flip it around. Let's make sure it's on add here. 
and then click OK. Now we have a tooth. Now before I go multiplying that tooth and showing you how to do the pattern, personally, I want it to have a little bit of a curved connection here, right? And that right there is what's called a fillet. Select those two edges, hit fillet, and then again, since we're not doing anything like complicated mathematically here, I'm just going to drag it till it looks good. That looks good. And I say, okay, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. So there's that knob. This isn't a gear. This is the knob. So let's turn it into a gear. To do that, you're going to play with patterning. Here it is. You see all these little containers here? The linear pattern, you're going to hit the little arrow and you're going to switch to circular pattern. This pop-up comes up. It says select the features you want to pattern. I select this uh, whole tooth here or whatever. And you'll notice it selects the top and bottom. That's fine too because that's part of it. And then you have to select an axis here. For that, I'm going to choose the circle. And we see four of them. Now some of you who have never used this before are already going, I already know what he's doing. First, switch this to pattern angle, and then you can start adding teeth. Let's just take a guess and say 12 teeth. Okay? Now looking here, again, since we're not doing this mathematically, we're just doing it visually, I'm just looking to see if like one of these teeth, if I had another gear identical to this, if one of these teeth would fit in between these two. And that looks pretty good. You can hit the up and down arrow to add gears or get rid of gears, make it tighter, looser. That looks a little better. So then I'll say, okay. And there we go. We got a gear. Look at that. It's a gear. A gear. Okay. So let me demonstrate actually how you would go about making the gear fidget toy that I showed some clips of. Okay. I'm going to open that up and show you what I did. Now, the optimal workflow for this actually is to create each piece individually, save them, and then bring them all together in another file to assemble them. It gives you a lot more freedom to move things around and arrange them and stuff. I'll show you what I mean. Let me open up that file. Okay, this is that little fidget spinner that you saw earlier. It prints, uh, that's upside down, it prints like this. Here, let's turn this sideways here so you can see it. This is how it prints with the gears on the bottom and that assembly on top. Let me hide a gear so that you can see what this is. You can see here I did the exact same principle I was looking at earlier, 45 degree chamfers, uh, captivating that gear. Now the benefits of being able to pull in the different parts is you can grab them and move them around a lot easier than you can if they're all one single part, you know, uh, and, and that's nice. It's nice to be able to rotate them and move them around and then alter them separately or even collaborate and have your friends designing parts for you while you assemble things. Incredibly powerful tool. So let's look at a section view to see how this is uh, working out inside. Again, we're going to go to view, section view. Let's switch our axis and let's look here. And you can see when I was designing this, I left massive gaps so you can see them easier. So again, if we take this, whoops, let's spin that around and let's flip it over so it's just the way you would print it. If we print this, you can see there's nothing that causes these to touch. Let's hide this, hide this uh, second gear as well. So you can see there's that and then we throw in the gear and they don't touch. So you print it, it pops off the bed, it works, but it also doesn't fall apart. Isn't that awesome? Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something and I really hope that you give this a try and experiment with it and share your results. For me, it was just, it was really eye-opening and it really opened up a lot of doors for me to be able to do print in place hinges and parts that work. Be sure to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and check out 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers. Uh, again, the link for that is down below.